Okay. This is the electric meter. It's on the west side of the garage. It's sealed even between the units. I find that a lot. So tops. Do it around. Okay. Power is below grade. What I like to see is a slip joint right here. Okay, that's what I wish I was seeing is a slip joint so that as the structure moves, the pipe would move instead of causing pressure up here. And uh, I see that in a lot of new construction. I don't know if that is an absolute code requirement, but it seems to be uh, industry standard. Industry standard. Coming along here, this is the main grounding wire coming in, buried into the ground. This has been labeled. All right. So what we've got here is um, hand labeling. See where it says danger? That's called printing. See where it says hazardous voltage? That's printing. See where it says mill bank? That's printing. See where it says Grayson Collin Electric Co-op? That is printing. This is handwriting. The manufacturer and code both specify that it should be printed, not handwritten. This is the AC circuit breaker. It's properly sized. 30 amps, clothes dryer 30 amps. The difference between these two is the clothes dryer is supposed to be GFCI protected and it's not. So we move along inside of here. That's the primary. That makes this a secondary. Some people call it the sub panel. It's a secondary panel inside the garage west wall. And what we have here is our neutrals and our grounds are separated. This is nice. Nice, the gap isn't too large. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, this cabinet was screwed into place. I get it, screws are faster, screws are tighter, but screws do not have the same shear strength. If this garage was to experience a tornado, for example, and your garage gets blowed up, I get it. You've already got a bad day. There's no doubt about that. But this is gonna pop out like a pimple. If it had been nailed into place, it might stay in the place if the wall stands. Uh, it might, if it falls with the wall, you don't have a separate piece where the first responders are going to have to step over some sparky box floating around. So that's, that's just, you know, it's one of the things that should have been done. Also, we've got debris. We've got combustible debris in the cabinet. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. I get that. But it's a deal. It's a deal. It's wrong. And I get that. That's what I get. So it wasn't nailed into place and you got debris inside of the cabinet. It's labeled like the main principle was, and um, it's handwritten again. It's all handwritten. Now the GFCIs and the AFCIs, I'm not testing them, I'm not tripping them unnecessarily, unnecessarily. Uh, the home is occupied, so there's a certain amount of respect in that regard, so I'm just inspecting them for in their locations. So, that's on GFCI already, okay. And just inspecting them for their locations. A lot of the GFCIs are in the, in the cabinet. A lot of them are on the wall, okay. And then speaking of the wall, over here, I just kind of walk around. Over in there. Right in there. Those two little wires or circle wires are going down next to the uh, bicycle tire, next to the camping seat, that little box plate back there. That's where the UFER is supposed to be. I don't know. I can't reach it. It's too much stuff. Okay. I can never get it back the way it should be. So I asked for access and it's really difficult. You know, my client's not going to know every single place for me to go to, but anyway that's where your UFR is supposed to be that's where your second panel is as labeled has dust in it and was screwed into place and this is where your meter is that doesn't have the little slip joint 